So we're here at MathEye Place. I'm Chris Webb. I was the civil engineer for this project. And back in 2007, uh, this project was the largest pervious concrete pour in the city of Bellingham. Uh, there's 12,000 square feet of pervious concrete parking uh, between the, the east parking lot and the west parking lot over here. So we're standing here in the west parking lot and underneath the west parking lot is a detention vault. And that detention vault serves not only the roofs of, the, of this development, but also serves the fire station next door. And this detention vault was made a lot smaller because of the use of the pervious concrete. The roofs from these homes are detained by this vault, but the 12,000 square feet of pervious concrete does not flow to this vault, and that is how pervious concrete was the most affordable solution for the parking lot. Had we done this in asphalt, we would have had to provide stormwater treatment and detention, which would have made the asphalt cost a lot more than the pervious concrete. And it's because we had nice sandy loam soils that infiltrated uh, at around an inch an hour uh, that really led to the affordability of this approach. So the section we used in these two uh, parking lots totaling 12,000 square feet is six inches of pervious cement concrete pavement over eight inches of the three quarter to inch and a half chipped rock reservoir course. And that course was laid directly on the native soil So this was a really exciting project for me to be involved in and support. Um, I got to get this little uh, sunflower for uh, the work I did on this project. This project was really important for the community in providing some affordable housing for this site and it was really innovative. A special ordinance was passed at the city to allow a 50% density bonus and some flexibility with some city regulations uh, which allowed this project to happen, uh, including the low impact development. The pervious pavement that we used here uh, on the, this project was the first of its kind being used in Bellingham. It, is a, it was a much finer uh, mix of aggregate, a quarter inch pea gravel mix uh, that's much, much smoother than the 3 8 inch pervious pavement that was used at the time. So we're standing in the vacated 15th Street right of way and you can see the slope that we had to deal with. Now the soils underneath the project uh, were very favorable. They were a nice sandy loam soil, uh, but still we felt like we wanted to have a backstop uh, to prevent uh, any possible exfiltration of the stormwater out of the pavement. And so underneath this ballast here, which is the same ballast uh, as is underneath the pavement, it's a three quarter to inch and a half chipped rock. We put a slotted pipe right under here uh, with the slot set right at the bottom of this six inch pavement section, which so if any water did develop underneath this pavement and was gonna get into the pavement matrix itself, it would overflow into the slotted pipe and run away. So this is not an under drain, this is an emergency overflow. Hi, my name is Freeman Anthony and I'm a project engineer in the city of Bellingham. We're taking a look at one of our downtown improvement gardens, or DIG, gotta have an acronym, that we put in last year, 2014, as part of a freshwater water quality improvement project that was funded by the Department of Ecology. This urban area here really has no treatment because it's part of the old part of the, the downtown in Bellingham. Whatcom Creek is right over where those trees are. And so after using bioretention in a few selective installations, the city felt ready to go ahead and install them in a larger, uh, on a larger context. We put 36 of these in, and uh, at the end of year one, they're not looking too bad, and we're looking forward to uh, the, them uh, doing our part to clean this part of the urban area's uh, stormwater runoff from the city streets. It's built in an existing urban context where you have old curb and gutter, and the existing street, and it's all within the existing city right-of-way. Right here you can see we've got a curb cut, and this allows the runoff that typically would go straight into a catch basin and into the creek, it allows it to uh, peel off and basically pre-settle in this zone here where you can see we've dug out the sediment 
that's occurred over the last, uh, last winter. Typically we would do this once a year in, in the spring. So what you have here are, uh, are rocks basically placed in around the sedimentation facility to slow the uh, stormwater down before it, it sheet flows across the uh, bioretention facility. This spreader board right here also slows down flow and allows for larger particulate matter, cigarette butts, other trash like that to fall out and stay on the top mulch layer of the uh, bioretention facility. Eventually, the flow percolates down through the facility, although when you have those big flows, it'll sheet flow across the whole facility and wind up down here in this beehive great catch basin. This will take really heavy flows to keep the street clear of stormwater and to get overflows back into the storm drain system. All the while, uh, stormwater percolates down through the special soil in the bioretention facility and either goes into the native subsoil or gets picked up by an under drain here that we use to make sure that we never fully saturate the bioretention facility for a long period of time. All these plants you see here, they're just coming back after their first year. We hope to get two to three times the volume in the, in the next uh, three to four years on these uh, with vigorous growth associated with um, the nutrients that are going to be coming off the street and into the facility. So the great thing with bioretention facilities like these is you can put them uh, in existing urban contexts like in a uh, uh, planter strip like you've got here. This is an existing water service and you can fit these around existing utilities. When there's basements nearby you can usually put a liner and those types of things. So there's a lot of space in the urban environment that's ready for these. Now, our guys from Public Works, they can get out here about once a year, but they're pretty busy. Um, in order to keep these bioretention facilities looking good, we've partnered with local businesses that we call Dig Stewards. And they've committed to keeping an eye on these facilities, trying to keep the bottles and cans out, trying to keep them weeded when necessary. Those types of improvements will take these facilities from being okay to really looking sharp and because they're in the downtown area, that's important to us. And the city, in an attempt to really recognize those stewards, we put a little plaque here, right here, that recognizes the adjacent business that's taken the time out of their schedule to make sure these look good. They'll give us a call if something comes up. Heavy duty maintenance operations, like uh, functionalities of catch basins, we can take care of that in the Public Works Department. Um, but we don't want to spend our time chasing every last cigarette butt that comes through. This bioretention facility here is a little bit bigger than the one we saw over there, but it takes a lot of uh, stormwater runoff from Ellis Street. We had a little bit more right away, so we were able to include pre-settling basins first before stormwater runs under the sidewalk through these pipes right here and then goes over into the main facility. In the main facility, you've got under drains as well, but we've actually added trees and the larger planting palette. This is a great location too, because there used to be a right-hand turn lane. We were able to take that right-hand turn lane out, reduce the pedestrian exposure, and install this facility at the same time. So it was a win-win for everybody. I gotta go. We're out here in the Lake Wacom watershed. Lake Wacom is the drinking water source for Bellingham. Uh, however, the lake is on the impaired water body list from the Department of Ecology. A few years ago, the city installed these pervious concrete bike lanes, and we used the mix design that's similar as we used at Mathai Place that creates a nice smooth riding surface. These pervious concrete bike lanes are unique in that they receive run-on from the road. The water infiltrates down through this pervious concrete mix and then into a sand filter below. And that particularly unique approach 
uh, with a significant amount of run-on means that these bike lanes need to be maintained more frequently. They need to be vacuum swept uh, to pull the sediment out of the pavement so that they can maintain their function over time. In addition to the pervious concrete bike lanes, the sidewalks on the other side of the street are also pervious. This project uh, that we're at is a small street extension off of Racine Street in Bellingham that I designed back in 2005 and it was built in 2006. The developer of this street extension extended the road to be able to access four lots and the runoff from this road is super elevated and it sheets towards the curb and gutter and then it runs over here to this curb cut and onto these uh, river rock spillway. You can see the sediment that's being trapped here in the inlet and the water flows down through this river stone and into the bioretention cell. The designer uh, of the planting plan used a primarily native plants and here is the outlet control structure. You can see that it's elevated about six inches from the top of the mulch so that when this cell floods um, it's able to maintain its six inches of ponding before spilling over. So this bioretention facility uh, is providing water quality treatment only. Uh, we did not uh, have enough impervious surface here to require flow control. Uh, plus the soils here were not suitable at all for infiltration. And so there is an underdrain that's underneath this cell. There's a clean out at each end and the underdrain flows here to this structure and then flows out. And this uh, cell is now nine years old and I think it looks really great. It's being cared for uh, both by the city and by some of the adjacent owners. I think it's looking really good for a nine-year-old facility.